Yeah, it's funny. I'm, I'm, I now know what it was like to be part of those people, part of that, that crowd who said, not in my name, and wore all those badges and marched against the war in Iraq. And I thought at the time, you're a bunch of panty waist, waist liberals. Where's your sense of moral <laughs> responsibility? Well, and now I hear this phrase, moral imperative, and I reach for my sick bag. We nurtured this fantasy that we had limitless resources to be able to finance remaking the world in our desired image. Um, Whereas we haven't got that sort of money. Yes, we do. How much did Iraq uh, cost Britain to, to undertake, James? Do you know off the top of your head? No. Best estimates are about £10 billion. Um, and if you compare that to the cost of, say, um, high-speed rail to or Britain's um, continuing membership of the European Union, which is which is circa 80 billion a year. We do have the resources to do it. We just you can see Henry it. arguing for, for HS2 or the European. That's 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 a, a straw man argument. If you're premising your uh, anti-war argument on the cost, then surely if you got your way on HS2 and the EU, then no, you you, think we could afford it. More personally, to, to my objection to to the Syrian um, this, this new Syrian war we're engaging in, is that we seem to be very uncertain of our of our war aims. No, I think you're right. I mean, I didn't, you know, want to place the, the onus solely on you to defend your position. I think, obviously, I've got I've got a case to make as well here. I said in a piece earlier this week that, you know, there is a part of it that is completely irrational because, you know, if he kills 100,000 people with tanks um, and yet kills 1,000 people with gas, then it doesn't actually make you know, rational sense to go, oh, well, now a red line has been crossed because you were talking about uh, the means and not, not the uh, eventuality of the conflict. Yeah, indeed. It, it's completely arbitrary, isn't it? Whether you die by, by gas or whether you die by, by shrapnel is neither here nor there. You're, you're dead all the same. Well, I would tend to agree that it is sort of a, an arbitrary, uh, an arbitrary uh, definition that we put on this um, uh, uh, conflict. I... It, it, isn't, that, isn't that the whole problem? That, 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 that President Obama arbitrarily declared that, that the red line would be the use of chemical weapons. And now, as Dan Hannan argued, he's in the, the awkward position of, of, of one of those parents driving their kids along on, 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 on the holiday journey and is threatened, if you behave any more, more like this, we're going to have to turn around. So he's now in the awkward position of having either to, to turn around uh, and... Uh, and um, <laughs> You know, show that he's a man of his word, or to uh, and, and ruin his holiday, or to do the sensible thing, which is which is which is drive on and ignore it. Which is why I would have never waited um, for this red line to be crossed. I think we should have been in Syria as soon as we realised um, that that this was you know going going away the way of tens yeah, of thousands. But we are where we are now, Raheem. So so why now? Um, I think primarily what I really would hope that we can do um, is stop. Uh, mass bloodshed as it has been going on um, for the past two years. Now, so escalating the conflict is, is is going to prevent mass bloodshed because it, because this is what it's going to do, isn't it's it? Not an escalation, James. This is what? an this is not an escalation. This is an attempt to stem the violence. It's trying to put a cork in it. You know, if you take out his command and control, if you take out his key artillery positions, if you take out you know X number of Assad troops, you're going to put a cork in it. That's based on a very naive assumption, if I may say so, Raheem, which is which is that once we've had these these clinical, clean clean takeouts of, of various military targets, the what the twenty seven air bases that he's got at his disposal, once we've done that, it's all going to be over. Nobody nobody says that that's where it stops. I mean, I, I think this is a very naive thing that, that the, the anti-war brigade pushes is that they think that we who are pro-intervention think of an intervention as the end of a conflict. We very much don't. The intervention is designed to try and minimise civilian casualties. That's all it's there to do. We all know, we all know that Syria is in a position whereby it will either have to fracture or it will continue its civil war for decades and decades. We all know that. That's a fact. There is no solution to the bloodshed. All we can do is attempt to minimise it, and this is the way to do it. Turning around or going like this to the whole situation, is that going to stop people dying? I'm, I'm 
just at a loss for words for him. You, you, you seem to be having it, again, you're having it both ways. You, the, either you're arguing this is, this is just a, 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 limited, a limited balancing exercise in which we're just going to take out a few military targets and then skedaddle, or you're saying we're in it for the long game. Which is it? Do you want Assad deposed? Is that what you want? Yes. You what? agree the rise of al-Qaeda in Syria is because we failed to act? It's, 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 it's quite likely, yeah. But, but, but then that was another time, and we, and we didn't do it, and, and, and we are where we are. So what will further failing to act achieve? President Assad is determined to stick this one out to the end, and his use of chemical weapons suggests that, that he's going to take the country down with him. He's not going to be deterred by a few tomahawk strikes, which means that actually we are escalating this war unnecessarily. It's not our bit, it's particularly not the business of Britain to get involved in this. Let me tell you what I think is going on here. Cameron, David Cameron has described himself as the as the heir to Blair. He very much like likes the idea of being seen as an international statesman because like all charlatan politicians, he sees foreign incursions as a way of getting away from the tedious domesticity of local politics where he has to concern himself about important things like the, the state of the economy and, and, and the disastrousness of our energy policy and the awfulness of our involvement in, in the EU and so on. It, well, it, it, it's inbuilt um, within, within politicians to want to, you know, to want to um, uh, big themselves up internationally. Um, however, we're not dealing with what Syria used to be and whose interest Syria used to be in. We're dealing with what the regional interest is now. And there is no doubt that whatever happens in the region will affect Britain significantly in some way. We can, we can agree with this. We can agree that, that the world is a global place these days, can't we, Raheem? But, I, but, but again, this is, this is... What are you saying here, that, 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 that actually not to do something is is washing our hands. I think it's it's the sensible policy when you haven't considered the consequences of the expensive, dangerous actions you are taking. Doing nothing is is often a much better, safer course. And I I would say it certainly is in this case. Where does it go for you? Where does your argument lead to inevitably? I mean, if 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 there are a million dead by the end of it, would would you still feel comfortable with knowing that we had an opportunity to stop that and didn't? It's not my job to feel to feel comfortable about about people being massacred in far off countries. No one feels comfortable about it. This is a, this is a Guardian stroke BBC technique. Indeed, indeed <laughs> I, 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 I would I would call. Most of the wars that we've had of late in, 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 the, in the Middle East and North Africa, most of our, our, our involvements there have been essentially BBC wars. It's interesting that the new neocons are, are, are the left. They are, are people like the BBC. So every time the BBC produces a heart-rending bulletin, you have these men on the ground seeing people, men and women on the ground, seeing civilians dying and are very upset about this, and they produce these heart-rending reports. And... Every, at the end of every report, the, the unspoken question is, well, do you want to let this go on? And the fact is that, it, it, that doing something is, is quite often worse than doing nothing. I, I believe that, that in international policy, one should take the Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm. I, I, I completely disagree with you there. I think I think you're right in the sense that um, the BBC and, 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 you know, you get these videos and things like that. But I think that's actually just reporting what's going on. It's very hard to report from inside a war zone and it not be heartrending. What's funny to me is that, you know, the, the, the Socialist Worker Party, the Stop the War camp, ca campaign or coalition or whatever, um, the Owen Joneses, the Diane Abbotts of the world, this is the left. This is the anti-war left. These are the ones who uh, fight so hard and long and fast and talk about imperialism and neo-imperialism and, and the West being a policeman. That's the side that you're on. I'm not on the left in this, in my position. You are. I think we're probably reaching the conclusion of, of you know, where we both stand, having not convinced one another one jot. Um, no. <laughs> but... Um, well, you having some arguments would help, I would have thought. Cameron has already made up, up his mind. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Cameron's pushing for this even more than Obama is. He wants to put his willy on the table. And there, and there you are with your hammer, ready to, to whack a mole. Oh, I wish. <laughs> okay. Um, I think 
I have nothing left to say to you. You, you isolated. Well, we can now, we can now, ed you can now edit this down. Yeah, I'm going to edit it just to, just to, just in, in, in a certain way that it benefits my own.